What influences your perceptions? What is it that impacts who you are and how you come to believe certain things? If you remember the idea of a perceptual process, it is intricate. You select information and that on its own is multifaceted. You organize that information to determine what comes first and what comes second and what you're going to pay the most attention to. And then you have to interpret it. And in some cases, you're 100% correct. Uh, in other cases, you were wrong. Uh, you Maybe you failed to attribute behavior appropriately. What leads to all of these things? What is it that influences our perceptions? and allows us to see certain things in certain ways. Cultural differences, physiological influences, and social roles are just a few of those things that influence our perceptions. Let's start with culture. It is basically an us and them mindset. If you think about what culture really is, you remember that culture is not just one region compared to another region. It can be men and women, family styles, lifestyle choices, and yes, ethnicities and races. So cultural differences can be quite diverse, but in a sense, it is an us and them attitude. We are this way and you are that way. So in a sense, we have what's called in-groupers and out-groupers. In-groupers are those that share our cultural beliefs, attitudes, and values and are considered fundamentally similar to us. So we are very likely in those cases to those that we feel very connected to because they're similar to us in cultural uh, perspectives, they're similar to us in our looks, in our lifestyle choices and such. Because of that, we are likely to form positive impressions of these people. Now let's imagine that you are from a particular political viewpoint or from a particular religion, or from a specific culture, a uh, different culture, meaning a regionally based culture, like maybe you are from Italy, or you are from America. Those different cultural definitions can, in some cases, lead us to see in-groupers and out-groupers, and in-groupers being anybody that's like us, we think of them as good people or positive. So going back to the political example, maybe you see all Republicans as great people because you're a Republican. Or Democrats are usually good people because you're a Democrat, whatever it might be. So when in this same case, when people behave rudely or negatively and they are our in-grouper, we are likely to attribute the behavior to external factors. Well, they behave that way because something bad happened in their life. Uh, their environment is a bad situation. Maybe they're super tired, whatever it might be. They attribute an in-grouper's negative behavior to outside things. Now, the out-grouper are the people that are not fundamentally similar to ourselves. So back to the political example, if we are Republican, the out-grouper would be the Democrat. If we're Democrat, the out-grouper would be the Republican. And in this case, when people behave rudely or negatively, we are likely to attribute that behavior to internal factors. So if your opponent, in this case, your out-grouper, is doing something negative or has bad behavior in some way, you attribute to that, that to who they are, internal factors. Well, that's just their characteristics. See, they are this religion or that religion, or see, I told you they are uh, this particular political party or that political party. And so you attribute their behavior to who they are as a person. Those in-groupers and out-groupers and that mindset can lead to something called ethnocentrism, which is the attitude that one's own culture is superior to others. Now there's various levels of ethnocentrism that you don't need to go into in detail right at the moment, but in a sense, if you really think about it, it's the mindset that says, the way I do things or we do things, myself and my in-groupers, that's the right way. A very easy example of that would be parenting styles. If you grow up in a family that uses a particular parenting style, whether that is um, partner parenting or 
the mother is the one that nurtures the child only, or maybe you grow up at approving of spanking or disapproving of spanking. That is an in-grouper's belief system. So I believe this because that's the way I've done it and my culture did it. And so ethnocentrism says that when you see people that are doing it differently from you, you can have varying degrees of animosity towards them from the point where you just say, well, that's different and I don't think that's right. What they're doing is morally wrong, all the way to disparagement where you find what they do to be horrific and you belittle them because of their lifestyle choices. So ethnocentrism, like I said, can be variable in its intensity, but regardless, it's something to be aware of so that you can watch and monitor how you express your viewpoints and whether or not they come from pure uh, ethnocentristic ideas. Now, culture is not the only one. Physiological influences can impact how we perceive the world. Now, how might, if you think about it, each of these impact your perception of the world? If you are a full, full seeing person, how do you think your perception of the world differs from someone who's blind? If you are in a wheelchair, how do you think your perception of the world differs from someone who is an athlete and walks and runs? All of these things, these senses can impact how we see the world. Your age is also one. Imagine the difference in perception between somebody who is five and somebody who is 35 or somebody who is 35 and somebody who is 75. Those can create different perceptual experiences. Health is another thing. What is the difference between somebody who is consistently healthy and somebody who has cancer? How do they see the world differently? Fatigue. When you're tired, don't you see things differently than you do when you have a lot of energy? Your experiences might make you, uh, if you're tired, make you more exhausted or more frustrated much more easily than it would otherwise. Hunger, we know what it means to <laughs> see the world differently when you're hungry or hangry or whatever you want to call it. Uh, so that kind of thing can impact your perception of your experiences. Also biological cycles, ranging, ranging from just being within the, uh, the time of your life when you can have children all the way to when you can't have children. That can impact how you see the world, but also even just on a monthly, month by month basis. When you are experiencing hormonal changes, that can change how you view the world. And then physiological challenges like having ADD or ADHD or uh, being on the spectrum, all of those can impact how you perceive the world and attribute behavior. So yes, culture can impact you, physiological difference can impact your perception, also social roles can impact your perception. So things like the job that you have. Are you working in a situation where you are the boss and you get to make determinations and your own schedule and such? Or are you at the, uh, at the realm of whomever makes those decisions for you and they can make that decision and you have to follow it? That can impact how you perceive your situation. Do you in your occupation have a lot of power or are you very powerless? Or is there somewhere in between? What kind of a job do you have? I've been both a college professor and a bartender, and I can tell you that there's quite a different experience based on my occupational status, not only with my viewpoint, but with the viewpoint of those that see me as a bartender and those that see me as a college professor, quite different perspectives that I often had received. And those overlapped at times where I was both a bartender and a college professor at the same time. And there was quite a different perception of those around me when they found that out. Another would be gender. Gender can definitely impact your experiences and how you come to perceive certain things. Uh, for example, my husband and I talk about the fact that men and women can tend to see different things in terms of multitasking uh, quite differently. He is very focused and able to really dive into a topic, whereas I jump around and again, multitask quite frequently. Our gender differences in that, because it has been statistically proven that women tend to be more often multitasking than men, and men are able to focus in, uh, that gender can impact how I see success and how I see 
uh, the what it means to work hard, uh, how I, how he sees what it means to do quality work, all of that can impact your perception of a situation. Socioeconomic status is another one, which means your social standing and your economic standing. So how much money do you make and what part of society are you uh, an in-grouper with? So are you below the poverty level or are you upper class? That can impact how you see things. And then finally, relational status can impact your perception. It can influence your perception. If you are a child, you see the world differently because of the fact that you are with a child parent relationship. Your relational status with that person will impact your viewpoint differently. Whereas if you are flipping that and you then become the parent, you see that relationship and have perceptions differently because you're the parent and not the child. All of these things, social roles, culture, and physiological influences impact how we see our world. They impact our perceptions of ourselves and others. <laughs>